Hello, this is Candy with eyes to Jesus.blogspot.com and welcome as I do my monthly planner tour. So I'm going to show you the planner that I am going into the month of October in, and that is this. And this is a, a Franklin Covey planner. It is a genuine leather planner. They call it the Alex planner. And uh, currently it is only available in classic size, which is this size, and monarch size, which is full letter size. And the classic size takes half letter sheet of paper and it is the American seven ring system that Franklin Covey, Day Timer, Day Runner, and At a Glance all use for their half letter size paper. And this leather is absolutely fabulous. Um, you can see up close there, it's a, a lychee leather, but the lychee pebbling is bigger than, uh, than maybe the lychee pebbling you might see on Moturn planners or on the uh, older Fantastic Daytime or Malibu planners. So it's a large lychee pebbling, which almost gives it um, a small croco appearance, especially when you just glance at it. And currently this is available in two colors. This color they call Saddle Brown, and then the other color is a gray color. And uh, this color is an orangey brown. The feel of the leather is addictive. It is buttery soft. Um, while there is some stiffener within the covers, which I appreciate, the leather itself is just absolutely fabulous. And it just feels amazing. It's uh, very hard to not, you know, to... to to resist just wanting to rub it because it is a very nice feeling leather. And the zipper pull is just kind of a nice leather zipper pull. It's really cute. And uh, the zipper is good. In my opinion, it doesn't zipper unzip as smoothly as the Tyler does, but the Tyler binder by Franklin Covey, that's the most smooth zip I've ever felt on a zip binder. But this one has a good footprint. The footprint is an inch shorter than the Tyler zip around binder. And that inch shorter difference makes all the difference for putting this beauty in my purse when I'm out and about. So let's go inside and I will show you my current setup. So you see that was pretty easy to unzip. Okay, so we'll start with the front pockets. So it's got two pen loops. So in the front pen loop, this is a ballpoint pen which doubles as a pen light flashlight, which I love that. And then you got this document pocket here, and inside here I have some skinny slips of note paper, and then this one sticking out is a slip of note paper that I laminated, punched, and slit, so I can pop it in and out of my rings, and it sticks up a bit so I can use it as a secondary bookmark if I need to, or if I want to write on some notes with a Sharpie marker, and then uh, erase them when I'm done, then rubbing alcohol takes a Sharpie marker right off the laminate. And then inside this zipper pocket here, I just keep uh, like bank slips for withdrawal and deposit slips and a few extra business cards or whatnot. Just doodads like that in here. And in the secretarial pocket, I just have a decorative journaling card sticking out and I have a little Franklin planner card sticking out. And the only real function that I use a secretarial for is when I need to stick in something that I will need to grab, like a coupon or a receipt or papers or a... a maybe a uh, you know withdraw or deposit ticket or something that I filled out and I'm heading to the bank with. Uh, whatever it may be, I'll just stick that here in the secretarial pocket so I can grab it when I'm out and about and when I need it. And then the seven card slots. The bottom card slot, I don't have anything in except for just a decorative um, piece of uh, cardstock and uh, a Carpe Diem magnetic uh, bookmark. And then I just have uh, my washi card and then I'd have Avery Hull reinforcement stickers, Avery labels, Avery dots, and a couple of business cards and notes. And that's what I keep there. Now, going to my dashboard slash front page lifter slash inspiration page, we have this. And this is laminated cardstock, and it is uh, thickly laminated. It's a thicker laminate. And I just have an olive clip here at the top. And this is so if I need to clip anything to the front of my planner or anywhere in my planner, I have this. And olive clips are magnetic paper clips. 
And then I have a journaling card that I have adhered to the front dashboard to welcome me. And on the other side of the dashboard, I have some sticky notes of a couple different sizes, the sizes that I use the most, and then I just have some stick-on-tab stuck on there for when I need to tab a page temporarily or whatnot. And then the next page after that is, I have it titled, it's titled Christian Supplications, and those are some scriptures that I like to regularly read. And then I have a, one of those sticky top tabs up here so that if I grab it and flip it, it brings me to my grocery list. But on the other side of my Christian Supplications page, I have a photo from my oldest wedding, and then a couple's picture of my husband and I taken in June, and then over here is grocery list. And then I just have several sheets of paper here for just writing down grocery lists or things that I run out of or low on or that one of the family members mentions that they need or want. So after those sheets of paper, we come to my first homemade divider. Now I have six homemade dividers in here, but these homemade dividers are years old. I have took these out of my stash, so they're kind of worn out, but they're still functional. And I just stuck a journaling card on each one. And I'm just going to use these until I decide if I'm probably if I'm going to go into 2022 in this classic size. And then if it looks like that's probable, then I will probably make new dividers for the classic size planner in December. Meanwhile, these six dividers suffice just fine. So the first divider is labeled home. And so this is the divider to my homemaking section. And inside my homemaking section, the first page is daily tasks. And I have some of those little yellow post-it uh, notes here because I had to change some of my cleaning up for a while. So I just have that notated here. And then the other side is children's chores and my children's table chores. And in this page right here is my children's paid chores tracker. And then I have an envelope right here and I just keep some $1 bills and maybe some fives in there depending on how many chores the kids do. I just kind of accrue up money in here so that I can pay them out every Saturday for any paid chores that they did. And then after that I have my projects page. This is for like deep cleaning and organization projects. And I have a little flag sticking off the top of that because if I grab this top flag and turn the page, the next page is my menu. But on the back of the projects page is my master grocery list. And my master grocery list, I read through it and reference it when I'm making my grocery list for the week. It helps me visualize what I have and don't have so that I'm not having to go through everything in the kitchen. I can just read through the master grocery list and it'll remind me if there's something else I need to add to the list. And so yeah, facing that is my menu and I plan out our breakfasts, lunches, and suppers, their main dishes including their side dishes for each day of the week and that's where I have this written. So then after that I have a list of breakfast ideas and then I also have lists of lunch ideas and supper ideas and those are main dishes and side dishes with them and I reference those pages in helping me come up with my weekly menu. Then after that I have the menus for Thanksgiving and New Year's. Alright and then after that we come to my pink pages and the first page of my pink pages is a table of contents and the pink pages are my recipes. Now I have my recipe pages numbered and the table of contents are to the sections and then each section is in alphabetical order so I can turn to my recipes fairly quickly. And I just have a little side flag off to the side so when I flip right to my recipes I know I can just flip right to that side tag. Alright, and then after that I have a gold top tab. So that's after my pink pages. After my pink pages I have some note paper for any recipes I might need to write in. And then after that I have this top tab bring me to this section. These are from the foodie inserts pack from Franklin Covey. It's only available in classic size, but if you've seen some of my other planner tours, uh, my pocket, Franklin Covey pocket planner, I had shrunk these down with my copy machine and put the smaller reduced version into pocket size into my Franklin Covey pocket planner. So even though they only come in classic size, you can tweak, uh, tweak them and copy them on the copy machine. If, for example, you're in a compact size, then you might want to buy the classic size and then you can reduce them in the copy machine so that you can have them fit your compact size. But the foodie inserts are great. Now, they come with these information inserts that I'll briefly go through and they also come with menu planning pages and grocery list pages. I don't use the menu planning pages or the grocery list pages as you saw, but I do like these information inserts. So they have glossary, and then they have measurements, 
And they have baking, can, baking pan conversion and ingredients substitutions. And then they have guide to fresh herbs. And then flavoring with spices and how to stock your fridge. Organize your pantry and how to use a chef's knife. Knife cuts and meat cuts. Marinating times, can and altitude charts. See, there's a lot of really good info in here. And then water bath versus pressure canning. So I just like to keep the information pages in here. And by the way, if you have an Alex or you've seen pictures of an Alex online, you might notice my rings are different. The Alex comes with inch and a quarter silver rings. I replaced my inch and a quarter silver rings with an inch and a half gold rings. And they work in here fabulously. Okay, so then my next divider here is labeled school. And this is my homeschooling section. I'm a homeschooling mother of Four, two of my children are grown and were homeschooled all the way through. I'm also the grandmother of two, and I am perimenopausal. So there's some hints on my age. Uh, but uh, I still have two children, older children, who are still at home and finishing up homeschool. Uh, I have one who's doing year 12 this year, and then one who's doing year 10. And uh, so this is where I keep my homeschool stuff. And we homeschool via the Trivium method, and we homeschool year-round, Monday through Thursday, and we take the month of July off. So the first page inside my homeschool section is our homeschool schedule. And then after that, I have our homeschool course of study or curriculum chart. And then this page being their reading lists. Then I have their copywork assignments and Monday homeschool. Tuesday and Wednesday homeschool, Thursday homeschool, and then some note paper. And that's my homeschool section. Okay, and then if you want a more detailed tour of my homeschool section, take a look at my August planner tour, and that's where I go into much more detail on the homeschooling section. Meanwhile, we move on to the next section, which is labeled budget. So going inside my budget section, the first page in there is labeled budget guide and this is a little chart that I made up where I list reoccurring expenses and bills and which check they are to be paid on throughout the checks throughout the month and then I just reference this when I do our budget. So after that I have a top loading pocket, <clears throat> excuse me, and inside the top loading pocket is where I keep bills and bill information so I do have some stuff in there and that pocket is see through. And then after that, we come to my budgeting pages. Now my budgeting pages is just filler paper. I don't use any budgeting forms. Franklin Covey sells great budgeting forms if that's something you're interested in. But I just use filler paper. And I write the date of that check at the top. I write down the reoccurring expenses and bills for that check. I take a look at my monthly calendar to see what's coming up for the week of that check and add that in as well. And uh, I usually like to be budgeted at least one to three months in advance in my budgeting section. So after my budgeting section, my next section is labeled reference. And so this is where I kind of just keep other information in my planner. So the first page of my reference section is a table of contents. And that table of contents is because all the pages in my reference section are numbered. So the table of contents is gift ideas, stock lists, perpetual calendar, family information, directions, contacts, health, codes, and food. So that's this information that doesn't really need its own section, but they need to be get toable stuff that I reference. And some things in here I reference more often than others, so I have a couple of flags sticking out here for things that I reference the most often. Now my next divider is labeled assorted. So assorted is kind of like my notes section. So um, an assorted, I just have some various different notes and brain dump and extra filler paper that I keep in the back of my assorted section. But one thing that's really cool about uh, half letter size planners is you can take a full letter size sheet of paper, fold it in half, and then punch it punch its edges while it's folded in half and then cut slit into the holes. Uh, for example, that's what I have here in my reference section. I have some Bible study notes. Uh, these are on a full letter size sheet of paper. I folded them in half and I punched them and slit the holes. So 
they just come in and out of my rings just like that. That way they're still there and easy to reference and when I want to take them out and look at the full sheet of paper I can just pop them out of the rings, open them up, take a look. When I'm done I fold it in half, pop it right back into the rings. So the filler paper is just your basic lined filler paper and this was from uh, a Franklin Covey binder I'd gotten from a thrift store years ago. It had inserts in it and it had it didn't have a swing pad in it but it had swing pad refill paper in it and all this filler paper is old Franklin Covey swing pad refill paper that I'm just using for just standard lined paper. Okay now after that we come to my my last main divider and that's labeled planning. So the first half of my planner, or a little more than half, is basically my full home management binder. Now, the rest of my planner, or at least besides the back matter, the rest of my planner is my planner section of my planner. So the first page inside my planner section is the uh, cover page to the inserts I am using. And I never fill out the information on it. I just have stuck on it a picture of my husband and I. And I like to keep the intro page in here because on the back of it is year at a glance for 2021, 2022, and 2023. Okay, and then I have the uh, planner quick start guide that came with the inserts. I don't need it, but I just like to keep it in my planner. So I have that in here as well, and that is double-sided. And then turning a few pages past that, I have week on two page inserts in here. Just a little bit, about a month, month and a half's worth. I don't use them, but I keep them in here for if I ever get a really busy week or we go on vacation, then it can be easier to have your monthly view and to also have a weekly view and then your daily view. So when I do need that, which I do on occasion, that's what I have these in here for. And uh, these are Teresa, Teresa Collin and Franklin Planner uh, weekly view. Uh, let's see, what is it called at the bottom? It's A Beautiful Life. So it's the, it's the Teresa Collins and Franklin Covey, A Beautiful Life. It's from that set. And this is an undated week on two pages. So it looks like this. Here's a full blank week. So I have, yeah, about a month to a month and a half worth of those in there. And then after that, we come to my sandstone month on two pages. And I have 12 months on two pages here, the full academic year is what I currently have in here. So we flip to October, and then the October divider, and then the October month on two pages. And then we flip to my page finder, which brings me to today. Now I'm using the sandstone day on two page inserts. I keep one month at a time in here of the day on two page inserts, but I have 12 months in here for the month on two pages. So here is page one of the day. And then I have my page finder. And then I have my master schedule. And then I have page two. So my page finder is a, the Franklin Covey Compass Page Finder, and their Compass Page Finder has a clear pocket on the front so you can stick notes inside the page finder. And they do sell compass cards if you like to fill out their specific categories and forms, which can help you if you struggle with your goals or trying to determine what your goals are and how to best reach them and break them down into smaller steps. Um, I'm an INTJ, so that's anti hero, which is uh, a lot of natural willpower. So my life is surrounded by my thinking processes. Here's the next goal. Here's how I'm going to reach it. Here's the next goal. Here's how I'm going to reach it. So I don't necessarily need goal planning forms. My brain is a goal planning form already. But the other side of the compass cards is notes. And so I actually am using the other side of the compass card in here, the notes side. Uh, for this. Now what's cool is on the bottom of the notes side of the compass card, um, if anyone needs just a little bit of direction or reminder on their planning, in very small writing at the bottom, it says plan weekly. Step one, review rules. Two, choose big rocks. Three, schedule the week. This is really hard to see without reading glasses. All right, and then we have plan daily. Step one, check today's appointments. Step two, make a realistic list. And step three, prioritize, parentheses, A, B, C, one, two, three. And that quick start planner guide I showed you earlier, it shows you how to use the Franklin Covey pages and how to prioritize. Okay, and then, so yeah, I just have some stuff written uh, on the front, uh, just some personal reminders for me on the front and on the back. And then my master schedule is laminated, it is double-sided, and I do have the holes slit 
so I can just pop it in and out of the rings just like I do with my page finder. So every night when I'm planning the next day, I just pull off the page finder and I pull off the master schedule and they get moved over to the next day. Now my master schedule has recently been changed or updated uh, because I have such different things on some different days that it was hard just having a general master schedule that I just kind of tweaked in my mind and altered for each different day. So what I did was last month I, I tweaked it up. I gave it, this is a time column for time of day and then the row across is for which day. So the first column is the when column and then I have Monday through Thursday and I do have some differences Monday through Thursday but those are homeschool days so not a lot of difference but the variations I do have are minor enough I can just notate them here. And then I have a Friday column and then a Saturday column and a Sunday column. And this master schedule has been absolutely fantastic for me. And I just keep uh, just a little uh, arrow uh, flag that marks which day I'm currently on. So Monday through Thursday, it just sits on top of the Monday through Thursday column. Well, today is Sunday, so it's sitting on the Sunday column. And that just helps my eye to automatically go into the correct column already. All right, so let me flip some pages over here and show you what a blank sandstone classic size day on two page Franklin Covey inserts look like. Now I've already gone to these in some detail uh, in my previous planner video, uh, but just to show you some features, I'm not going through them again, but just some of the features that I really like about the sandstone, and these features are also in their standard seven habits uh, inserts in case you want something with more bolder colors. Uh, so you have your to-do list section here, but theirs is broken up into three sections. So you can actually divide it up into categories. Uh, and then you have your appointment schedule, the appointment schedule goes from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. or you could do 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. if you're a graveyarder. Uh, and then you have some blank time slots before the 7 and after the 9 in case you need to add some more times. But what I like about these is you basically have a slot for like for example for 7 o'clock. You have a slot for 7 o'clock and they have a blank slot under that which would be presumably 7.30 but you could write in if it was 7.15 you can write in a 15 or you can write in a 45 if it's at 7.45. Some of their other inserts will have like four lines. So you'll have seven, and then a blank line, then a blank line, then a blank line. That's too much uh, for me. I just need one blank line under the hour, and then I'll write down seven what on the next blank line. So I like that. And also on their appointment schedule, you have a shaded area on this side. Those are little check boxes, so you can check things off on the appointment schedule if you need to, and sometimes I do. And then the notes page, it's shaded over here, which is great. So that's a place where you can prioritize and check things off. Because I do additional lists, and I will break down bigger tasks into smaller steps on the second page. So, yeah, these inserts are great. I'm trying to decide, do I want to stick with sandstone for 2022, or do I want to go into seven habits, or do I want to go into leadership, or do I want to go into serenity? So I'm liking the layout of the sandstone. So right now, I'm considering their standard seven habits inserts or continuing on with sandstone. Who knows what I'll eventually decide, but that's what I'm looking at right now. Okay, so now I'm going to move past all the planning pages to the back matter. So the first page in the back matter is a filler sheet of paper. At the top, I labeled it Future Planning 2022 Plus, and I just write down things that are coming up next year and the years after that. I have several things written on there. Now, if you do a lot of future planning, when you buy inserts from Franklin Covey, they do come with future planning pages for years in advance. So you can use those if you'd like. My future planning isn't too intense, so I just need one sheet of paper. All right, and then after that, I have some envelopes. Now, this one is a little Ziploc envelope for a compact or personal size planner. I just punched some more holes into it so it will fit in a compact or personal or portable but it will also fit in the seven ring system. So I have some doodads and such in there. And then after that I have uh, again a compact or personal size plastic insert that I punched to fit in here that is for holding cards. So I have three cards in there. And turning past that and turning the next page I then have two classic size zipper envelopes and I just stuck in some folded over glitter paper in there just for some privacy and then I will do some filing and often it's temporary filing in here for things that I am working on. Almost like an inbox and an outbox but not quite. Uh, and then after that, this is really cool. 
All right, so this is a traveler's notebook insert for standard size traveler's notebook. This is a canvas wallet insert made by Moterm for standard size traveler's notebook. I love this so much, I wanted to have it in my planner. So I just used my crocodile punch, which punches through thick things like butter. It's, there's no force or pressure. I barely have to apply pressure and it punched right through with these multiple layers of canvas. So I just punched it and stuck it in here. I don't have anything in this right now. Uh, so I don't currently keep my wallet in my planner, but if I do want to, like for example, if I just am gonna just go out and I'm not gonna be out too long, then I might throw my wallet contents in here and just grab my planner, keys, phone, and sunglasses and not have to bring anything else. Uh, but also if I have anything else I wanna keep in my planner that needs pockets, I can use this. So you have, you know, your slit pocket here that closes with a flap. And then inside here you have three card slots and then you have your zipper compartment. So these are just really handy to have. In fact, I'm using a passport size one of these for my actual wallet. All right, and then after that, we have a back page lifter. I just have some flags and tabs on it, front and back. Well, I guess not on back, on the front. So I forgot, I have tabs on my dashboard, so I don't need them on here. And then we have the back matter. So I have a notepad here, and this is one of the older Franklin Covey notepads. I think it's a Franklin Covey. No, it's an at-a-glance. So this is actually one of the newer at-a-glance notepads. Here's the thing. This one's not falling apart. Um... I love the Franklin Covey notepads, especially the new ones, they're so pretty, but the backing falls off every single time I've had one in any size. The cardboard backing always falls off. So this at a glance one, I have used this off and on in some other planners. I got this, I believe, earlier this year, and the cardboard backing stays on. So I can actually use it as a notepad and not have to stick it in my rings. All right, and then the back of the Alex, it comes with just one pocket back here, and then I just have some other stuff stuck in back there. I have uh, some Bible study notes, some reminder notes, some mail I need to take care of, etc. stuck back there. And then here in my second pen loop, I just have a Sharpie S Gel .7. Wow, these write amazing. So I'm very much enjoying using that pen. So yeah, this is my whole planner setup. It's still got my whole life in it. It's still got everything in it. It just doesn't have my wallet in it anymore. Because I just think it'd be just a little bit inconvenient for me to be taking this whole big thing out of my purse just to pay for gas at the gas station, for example. So I just have my wallet separate again. This is the first time I've had my wallet separate from my planner for years. But the Alex is worth it. Now if the Alex ever comes out in compact size, there's a chance I'd go back to compact, but I don't know. I mean, the half letter size, I feel like it lowers anxiety levels uh, because I have more space. I can write more down. I find I am writing down more detail, which is making things easier because I have the space to write down more detail and it's decluttering my brain more. So, and I'm also really liking that I can just take one sheet of regular letter size paper and fold it in half and stick it in the front or back document pockets or just quickly punch it, slit it, and stick it in here. And uh, Franklin Covey does sell, off and on I've seen it, um, portable flat seven hole page punches that have that can go into your rings and be carried in your planner. I've off and on considered getting one. I thought that'd be kind of cute. I mean, because then you get a sheet of paper and you want to put it in your planner and you're out and about, you have your portable punch right there with you. You just punch it and stick it in and you're good to go. So yeah, I am loving the Alex. Um, I wish it was a bit more brown and, and not quite as orangey, but it is different shades of orange and brown and different lighting. The texture and the feel is phenomenal. So buttery soft. It's amazing. I don't like the smell. It smells kind of like, in my opinion, like an orange that had been sitting out in the sun for a few hours. So it's like hot old citrus smell, which is funny because of the color. So I just don't sniff it. And maybe it'll, it'll eventually air out. It doesn't smell bad. It's only when I put my face right up to it and sniff it. And, uh, you know, like my daughter, she thinks the smell is just fine. She kind of likes it. I, I just don't. So I'm not sniffing on this planner like I have been known to do on some of my other planners. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the zip because it holds everything tighter and gives it a thinner footprint. As to where with a snap, depending on the length of the strap, it could have it open a bit more and the insert spread out a bit more and it's thicker. And then the slip tab with the Aurora planners, 
That's the thing I don't like about the Aurora's is I don't like slip tab closures because it's a looser closure so I end up with a such a fat planner when if it was just a tighter closure or a zip it would be so much thinner because my pages would be squished together instead of having so much air between them which is making the planner thicker. And of course a thicker planner can also be quite tricky to take in and out of the purse. So this one is not that bad. And remember I put inch and a half rings in here and they're completely full. This is not bad. So this concludes my planner tour, my planner setup for the month of October. Have a blessed day.